The board is here tonight to work together with all of you, property owners, architects, neighbors, and interested citizens to continue the long tradition that allows Lake Forest residents and businesses to work together to preserve the qualities and the unique character that make Lake Forest a special community. We recognize the personal importance of each petitioner's request. Our goal is to respect the needs and desires of property owners while balancing the interests of the community as a whole to preserve and enhance its architectural character and landscape streetscapes. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Building Review Board, the types of projects that come before this board are those in which the property owners are requesting a variance to allow a home that is larger than permitted by code, are seeking a demolition permit and approval or replacement structure, or otherwise involve issues that could not be fully resolved by city staff. It is important to note that over 95% of building permits are issued by the city without the need of any board review. Thus, the board typically deals with the most challenging and sometimes controversial projects. The City of Lake Forest is committed to conducting open and fair meetings. To achieve that goal, the board has adopted meeting procedures and all parties will be provided an opportunity to speak. These procedures are outlined on the agendas available at the back of the room. This meeting is also broadcast on cable television. Speaking on behalf of the entire board and city staff, our objective is to provide a review process that is thorough, fair, and without unnecessary delay. The uh, next order of business is the approval of two uh, sets of meeting uh, minutes. The first is from the August 7th, 2014 meeting uh, for the BRB. Uh, do we have any uh, comments, revisions to that, or uh, should we go right to approval? Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Yes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 The August 7th, 2014 minutes are approved. Uh, the next is the November 5th, 2014 minutes and the two, December 3rd, 2014 uh, Building Review Board minutes. Any comments on those gentlemen or any uh, clarifications? Uh, okay, move for uh, approval. Can we approve them both at the same time? I think we can, we're gonna go Make for it. Make a motion it. to approve the November 5th and December 3rd minutes as presented. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The November 5th and December 3rd, 2014 meetings are, meeting minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is the uh, consideration of a request for approval of new residence with an attached garage and a vacant lot located at 101 Lewis Avenue. Approve the, approval of the overall site plan and a conceptual landscape is also requested. No variances are requested. The owner's gladly development and the representatives are Robert Gebelhoff and Ken Height. Uh, before we begin, are there anybody with any ex parte contacts or conflicts uh, on this one that would like to say anything? No? Seeing none? Welcome, gentlemen. Hi. Good morning, or good afternoon. I'm sorry, good evening. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, and Happy New Year. <coughs> this is the, what I'm showing right now is the original plan that we presented to the board in, I believe it was set October, at the October meeting. And this is what we did, brought in the last meeting, which was in December. And it shows, and then this is our most recent um, thought process going forward with the board. Um, that's front, rear, um, east and west elevations. And then this is the um, a view looking from on perspective looking south along Boina at Lewis, the corner, that would be what the front view would be from Boina, and that would be the rear view heading, the perspective heading north on Boina, and then there's another view a little bit more going farther north on Boina. Um, these are the changes that we've made. Um, we changed back to the gable, um, roof from the original from the original plan we had a gable roof and via staff and board comments um, that element was deemed most desirable um, per staff they asked us to get rid of the gable at the front of the house and hip that roof which we have done um, the biggest concern has always been this person what we would call the west element of the property we've gotten rid of the dormer that was there originally replace it with an eyebrow, but we had to add an, an additional dormer for egress on the west side. Um, the windows were originally molded in the front. There were two windows that were molded together. We've split those. We've added a kind of a decorative piece over on this side. In this corner, it's a pillar that matches the pillar on the east side of the house. 
Additionally, on the front of the house, the main, this main body of the house is turned, went from stone to cedar shake shingle. And that's pretty much what we changed on the front. The rear, we did the same, matched the same cedar shake shingle on the rear, kind of more lined up the windows. Changed these, used to be split, two windows that were split. We've molded them to stack on top of the windows above. We've centered this window. This window has been revised to match the one above, a little bit less in depth. Um, and then we added another double mold window below the dormer to kind of balance that element. Um, obviously, you can still see the dormer on that side. Um, this is just that west elevation, the way it would look. The pitch of this roof is now in the same as the pitch on the um, hips on the front and rear, per se, gable side, gable and those little bump outs where that hip pushes back. And this was the uh, landscape plan that we provided back in, I believe it was in the December meeting. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have a color um, view of this. Um, I need to rotate this, I apologize. I'm sorry, I'm missing it. But anyway, the, I have to do that, sorry. Rotate view counterclockwise. We've just changed the, um, the plantings. The spruces kind of came down to buffer the driveway a little bit more. There is a fence that's added, you'll see in the next slide. Um, and I believe that's relatively the basis. We've changed the spruces and then there's a fence that runs from this point to that point on the lot. And somebody, they ask us to provide a picture of the, oops, went the wrong way. Um, a picture of the fence as it's proposed. It's a board on board fence, seven feet tall, that will run that length. And those are pretty much the changes that we've made. Um, I d in my personal view, I believe that the house that was presented previously is a little bit, you know, I like the eyebrow window pieces of it. I am not as, this isn't as desirable per se as, I like this, the east element. I like the eyebrow windows. Um, I believe that Previously, what we presented previously, which is a couple slides up, um, it's the house is definitely diminished in. Obviously, the mass is diminished, which was one of the obvious options that the board wanted or desires of the board. Um, it's not as desirable, I believe, as what it, we originally proposed, but um, it's seeming to meet all of the board criteria. And the other thought we are what is it, six feet below allowable height, and we're also a couple hundred square feet below bulk. So that's where we are at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Um, staff report, please, Kathy. Thank you, Chairman King. Um, in response to your comments, as reviewed by Mr. Height, there were uh, some changes made. Uh, at the board's uh, previous discussions on this, you did acknowledge that this is a difficult lot. It's, it's a lot that tends to be larger than some others in the immediate neighborhood, uh, resulting in a, a house that uh, um, is, a, appears uh, larger than the immediate neighbors. Uh, you did hear some concerns from the neighbor to the south uh, because this is a corner lot. The, the full length of the rear of this long, narrow house uh, really um, abuts the front yard and, and the front elevation of that house. So it's, it, it is a tough lot. It's, it's heavily wooded. Uh, vegetation is being preserved, uh, particularly on the west side of the lot near the corner. Um, given the narrowness of the lot, this house is, is driven to a long, narrow footprint. So uh, it isn't uh, a simple task to try and reduce the appearance of have it fit more quietly into the neighborhood. Um, having said that, uh, 
The element on the east side, the one-story element, seems to be a very successful part of this plan. Uh, the modification and alignment of the windows on the rear elevation is an improvement. One suggestion uh, that was made by one of the board members was perhaps consideration should be given to um, use of different materials on the two one-story elements. Um, the shake, uh, the cedar shakes are now now proposed for the vertical central elements. Uh, so uh, it might be appropriate for you to consider whether um, actually doing the two one-story elements in shake, if, if that would help the house to uh, sit more quietly, perhaps not. I think we heard clearly from the board that it's that west element, uh, the effort to bump the roof up over the garage and get that bonus room that really seems to be the piece that feels forced. Uh, the petitioners have looked at various plans. Uh, this one uh, replaces the dormers on the north and south with uh, a focal point window, but as a result you have the dormer that extends out to the west side, uh, which um, perhaps could be a, a prominently viewed feature from the um, south from the Buena Road streetscape. Um, the, the simplest way to address that issue that was raised by the board is to uh, have the garage simply be a one-story element that, that mimics somewhat, although it would be larger uh, than the element on the east that would not provide the opportunity for a bonus room. Um, we did... Um, you did receive these updated plans just in the last couple of days in your packet because we did take the extra step at this point in the process and having our, um, our plans examiner actually look at that space over the bonus room and as it was configured um, in the packet that went out to you last week, it actually didn't meet the code requirements for head height. So we're, we're really trying to, to force some space here. So as a result, that roof has come up an additional 15 inches because you if, if it's going to be livable space, it needs to be the co meet the code requirements for livable space. So that is the piece that uh, I think we, we can't come to you with an answer, uh, looking for your input. Um, you did see tonight some additional information on the fence along the south property line. Uh, a board and board fence is proposed, so that gives the opportunity for some shadowing, some texture there. So I think that um, certainly helps to, to screen that. Uh, exposed rear elevation uh, and we can certainly work with the petitioner what you have now is a conceptual landscape plan it would need to be finalized and put on a grading plan we can work with them to certainly enhance uh, landscaping in, in areas that may help to soften this particularly from the Buena Road streetscape and for the neighbor directly to the south thank you thank you um, now it's time for any questions or requests for clarification from the board to either petitioner or staff. Bruce, you want to kick us off tonight? Um, I actually, in, as it relates to clarification, no questions. Okay. All right. Ross, any questions? No questions. Okay. I do. Um, with regard to the replacement of the stone f face in the center of the front and rear elevations and replacing it with the shake, do you have a personal preference to which of the two looks you like better? Personally, I probably liked the stone, but there was some staff thought process that it, the changing of material, and I have to agree that if we change the material, that it, it softens it a touch, which softens that front facade a little bit more and de-emphasizes that central, per se, element. So I'm in agreement with that. Um, I liked the stone. I like that stone and frame piece, the way that they go together. But we do have the elements of the um, chimneys that are in there that are will be the same stone, so. Well, in my mind, well, I can get into that later, but uh, I have no other questions, thank you. Okay, Michael? It's been a while. Could you just refresh our memory on the color palette for the house and what the color oh, scheme? Actually, yeah. The stone is like the, a, a gray 
typical gray. In the gutters? What's that? The gutters? I, I, the gutters? Do I have letters? No, gutters. The gutters. The gutters will be white also. I apologize. Fred, any questions, uh, no clarifications? To... No questions right okay. now. Um, I'm personally curious, the, the fence, any, uh, the seven feet, any magic to that? Uh, I don't know if staff asked for seven feet or uh, that height. How, how it was discussed with the neighbor to the south about the, the height of the fence, and that was kind of the, the meeting kind of of the minds of the, okay. that fence, and it would be, I guess, you know, it's, it lessens the amount of the house sitting, per se, towards Boyne was and facing that. And the landscaping you're planning to put, and there's limited landscaping, I know there's a swale there, would it be on the side of the fence of your property or on the other side towards a neighbor? On our side of the on fence. On your side, okay. On our side of the fence. That's, these are relatively, they're column repairs. They're, well, they show us three, three inch, I believe they're about 24 to 26 feet tall. Okay, and then I see uh, from the uh, the conceptual landscape plan it uh, talks about a wood chip swale, and I'm curious if that's really the intent there or not. Because I got to tell you, I have some wood chips in some of my thing, and anytime there's any kind of water, I had the it, same doesn't... thought process because I spoke to Dan about that. He said, based upon the pitch of the swale, he said that that is the best okay. thing to put down there, and they will stay. So I had the same thought, and I asked him okay. the same thing. I said, won't they wash? And he said, yeah. no not in that pitch in that distance, so. Okay. And uh, the extra column you put in on the west side on the garage element, could you give us a little thought process on that as well, that new element that you have there? Before there was kind of almost a double hip they kind of laid on top of each other because it steps back, the one car stall bay steps back. So we brought out the soffit over that one stall bay so by putting that pillar in there, it kind of balances that piece sticking out, okay. that soffit sticking out, and it ties into the east side so that they kind of mirror each other, per se. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks. Um, anything else? Okay. Uh, now's a chance for anyone from the public to come up and uh, testify at all, if anyone would like. Yes, sir, yeah. please come on up. If you don't mind, uh, heading over to the microphone there, please. Thanks. Uh, I'm Eric Lohmiller. Uh, we've been here before. My wife or I have been at both board meetings before, and uh, we had a chance to look at this design. It's the first time I've seen the perspective, um, and that was going to be one of my comments that I thought it would be helpful to see a perspective or a colored rendering or you know, exactly how this house is sited. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if that's accurate with all the trees to the west of the garage. I, I think some of those are gonna be coming down because of the side load garage, but uh, I'll get into that. Um, you know, I guess our position really hasn't changed, uh, you know, with these updated drawings. Um, you know, the house still appears to us to be really large from the street, completely out of scale with the neighbors. Um, you know, just looking at that streetscape on both Lewis and Buena that's included in that packet, uh, the, the area of the, of the front elevation, it's 50% larger than our house. It's 60% larger than the house next to it on Lewis. And, and that's kind of where I'm going with that, just looking at a scale. You know, maybe the square footage fits uh, within the allowable, but just the way the house looks, it, it just looks like a huge house. Um, you know, and I guess I, I agree with the city's assessment that, you know, barring a complete redesign, which is not, doesn't seem like it's where this process is going, you know, probably the easiest way to alleviate some of those concerns are, are the garage, um, making it a single story, getting, you know, eliminating the bonus room above. Uh, you know, we think that strongly consider a front load two car garage, um, you know, it, it would help with several things, one being, um, you know, you could set back the garage from both the front and rear elevations to kind of break up the plane. Um, right now, you got a pretty long, flat plane of house on both uh, north and south. Um, potentially could save a tree or two to the west. Um, it's going to be less hardscape, uh, which is always a good thing from a stormwater perspective. 
Um, and it's also, uh, you know, it looks like a difficult driveway to navigate as, as shown on the, on the landscape plan. Um, you know, potentially that turnaround might have to get a little larger for it to be uh, an effective driveway. Um, so yeah, I think this, this is helpful. I'd like to see a full color rendering if possible to exactly see how this house is gonna look relative to my property because it's gonna be a lot of impact as you can tell from that picture right there. Um, that's it, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Okay, seeing none. Um, Kathy, any uh, thoughts on the uh, public testimony? I don't have anything further to add. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Uh, any rebuttal to the public or any other thoughts, uh, gentlemen? I guess I have one other thing. Just for, I didn't, we didn't talk about the fence height. I mean, it was discussed in general, but not like specific material for height or anything like that. Okay, thank you. I would, I would like to have that discussion. Okay. okay. All right, anything else, guys? That it was my understanding that the fence was discussed with Lori. Um, I was told that it was discussed, so I don't have any response to that because I didn't have that conversation. Um, the two-car garage, I believe we addressed that in the last meeting. We talked significantly at nauseum about a two-car garage. First of all, I wouldn't build a house today without a three-car garage. doesn't make sense. We went around the neighborhood. Lori took a survey around the neighborhood. The number of people that have turnouts where they've parked their third car because they can't get in their garage. They don't have a third stall to put in there. There are, is precedence in the neighborhood for three-car garages. The element over the garage, the, that is, that's, that room over the garage that everybody's trying to, per se, eliminate, that's pretty much a non-starter. Um, it's within keeping you're still going to have a roof there no matter what it is um, the architectural element piece of that that we've added to that roof of the garage is not detracting it's actually making it a prettier roof than it would be if it was just all flat roof and shingled um, and the garage the driveway we actually did do a study we did turn a suburban in that radius. There is no reason to extend that any long, any deeper, the driveway piece to make that any deeper than it is. Um, so, you know, I guess that would be my response to that. The uh, city's, uh, the staff's recommendation is to eliminate that extra room and you just indicated that's kind of a non-starter. So um, as a board looks at this, is it safe to say if the board determines that the bonus room is not part of this and we turn it down, you guys would not be willing to go forward if, if we do follow staff's recommendation? That I would not go forward, correct. Okay. Yeah, that's. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, any other questions, guys, before we go into our uh, internal discussion? Okay, great, thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen, um, Bruce, uh, what are your thoughts uh, on, on the uh, revised proposal and, and the project in general? Um, well, hopefully the, uh, <coughs> the petitioners uh, understand that we put a lot of uh, thought into this as, as you have. These are, um, as Chairman King outlines in the beginning, the only uh, uh, situations that come here are ones that essentially demand some degree of compromise. So as I look at this, what I'm trying to balance without undermining any of the, the valued <coughs> comments of my colleagues is um, what's the best balance of the compromises that we're required to evaluate. So there are clear standards that we need to abide by. Um, so there's certain things that we don't have too much flexibility on. Um, we also have to have consideration of the neighbor, the neighborhood, uh, the design aesthetics in the neighborhood, so many of those things, and obviously the interests of the people who have the property. Um, the additional one here that, that makes it more challenging is that um, if we were only looking at the uh, land itself, the land by itself is an exception to the neighborhood. 
the vast majority of the neighborhood does not have lots that are designed in this regard. So again, not to undermine any of the, the uh, thoughts of, uh, or points of my colleagues, but I think it's fair in the world of compromise um, that we should at least uh, be open to a structure that respects the fact that the land itself is different. Um, and we are putting something in there new today uh, with this uh, larger bit of property. Uh, it's not that they were all done at the same time when everybody might have said, I just want a bigger yard, but I want a home that's about the same size. So we are trying to balance the fact that it's a, it's a newer world and comments you made about garages and some other things, I think they are uh, worthy of consideration. So with all that said, um, I personally, and I, aesthetics is not supposed to be our direct domain, even though we like to weigh in on those things because they do have an impact on the sense of massing and some other things. I actually see this personally as an improvement. When I looked at where we started and where we are now, I actually think in terms of the things that we've talked about repeatedly, I want to have a, a softened perspective of the property as I go by it from whether it's the east, west, uh, whatever direction you might approach this. Um, we've pushed uh, very hard on uh, the uh, west elevation for all the reasons that, that have been brought up. Um, you brought it down further and then it was an ordinance that basically said if you are going to keep it, it actually has to go higher. So you're falling within that standard. Um, I think the eyebrow uh, dormer style works well. I could see some people having, I don't even want to say issue, but they may uh, look at the, um, the barrel dormer um, and say, well, I, th that seems to stick out a little bit. But I actually think as all this landscaping grows in and those trees build and some other things, I'm not convinced that that is somehow is just going to grab your eye and be some kind of distraction at all. Um, and I do think it does complement the sense of the eyebrow dormers and so forth. I think you've softened that elevation. Um, and as I look at the house uh, from east to west, I think that there's a good balance to the structure. Um, so uh, across the board, I think you've made uh, quite a, a good amount of considerations and made adjustments to a lot of the comments that have been made. And I think we've end up, ended up with a structure that I think um, is a good structure again. I've said it the third time, not to undermine the other points that will be brought up by my colleagues, but I think this is a, in the world of the compromise, I think it's a, it's, it's a, a good balance of all the things that have been brought up. So that's, that's where I stand. Thanks. Appreciate it. Ross? I'm going to revert back to the first kick at the cat a few months ago. It's, it's a difficult site. We all recognize that. You have a right to build a, a home within the code and ordinances, set building building uh, criteria, et cetera. One of our missions is to be sensitive to the community and the neighborhood. The neighbors make a very good point. I do believe that the constraints of this site are still reflect a, a massing in what I'm seeing that, that is overwhelming to the neighborhood. It lacks, I'm going to use a term I used in the first, the first meeting, it does not have an organic feel to it. Um, there are challenges, but given the challenges, well, I would have preferred, and I believe I made these comments initially, that the, that the home work within the, the flow and the character of the site. For instance, the, the, um, the east side falls off. There's a grade change. I think we discussed this the first time. It's a radical change, but might not it have been more organic and in keeping with the character of the site and, and less obtrusive to the neighborhood to locate the garage on, on that side? That would have naturally lowered the, the garage, and it would not be as, massing, as massive as, as we're discussing here today and, and the, the notion of perhaps eliminating the bonus room to try to bring that mass down. I think simply if you'd retooled the home. Instead, you know, you, you did a, a nice job of responding to comments here the last two sessions. I know it's very frustrating, but I, I see them as, as band-aids, quite frankly, and relative tweaks. Um, when we really need 
you know, some surgery. So I'm, I'm still struggling with this, quite frankly. Um, you know, I agree that it would be nice to have some step back to the garage, have some offset. I understand the point about the three-car garage. It's legitimate in, a, in the marketplace. Is that our watch? You know, is that our concern? So, I'm, I mean, those are my comments for now. I'm going to pass it off. Sure. That's great. Thank you. At first, <clears throat> I do compliment the architecture. I mean, you have put together a beautiful home. But what I've wrestled with from day one is trying to put a square peg in a round hole <clears throat> and how much you're trying to do. I continue to wrestle with the issue of trying to fit a three-car garage <clears throat> in the proximity of the lot that you are, and that creating a situation where you have a very difficult driveway that needs to be navigated. You've got a, a buyer who, who has not been identified yet who I, I just have a lot of trouble imagining someone finding a configuration like that to be a, a very livable situation. On top of that, the changes to the garage uh, roof space, very attractive, but what that leaves you with is, a, in my mind, a, a bonus room that <coughs> might not be all that functional at the end of the day because of how uh, low the roof is in spite of making accommodations to increasing the roof height, how narrow that space is. And I really, <coughs> going back to comments I made day one, think uh, consideration needs to be made to reorient, reorienting the garage to face forward, having it be a two-car two -car garage, and eliminating the bonus room above. Okay. Thanks, Ted. Michael? Well, yeah, I, this is a tough one. You know, I think everybody realizes this is not an easy lot to develop and all the com problems associated with it. <clears throat> There's been some progress on it, but I, I think it... You just still end up with the west side of the house and just saying like there's just it does it's it's tough to just say okay I can embrace that and it it seems uh, to add a lot of mass to the house it's a big house and I think I still have a concern with the the west end of the house okay. thank you Fred your thoughts uh, yes well, we, it's been a, uh, a long and difficult road here uh, coming along and uh, lots of bumps in the road as we've gotten from where it started to where we are. Um, and I still think it has bumps uh, in the road and even though they've been uh, smoothed out in a few places. Um, one of the things, I, for example, I'm, I can't, I should have asked this in the question period, but uh, uh, namely the fence uh, to the south, does it turn a corner? Is it just a plain a plane that occurs, or does it, in it's fact, just a, it wrap just back be to it? Like it would just be a plane, one plane. It's just a plane. That, that bothers me a lot because it, it, even if it turned back, it doesn't have a, a strong integral feel that it belongs to the house. If we went and touched it, we'd know it belongs to the house. It belonged to it in a physical sense, not necessarily aesthetically. Um, uh, you know, the fence itself, I think, is, is it, it's nice that it's wood, uh, not very interesting. Uh, you've got some reveal with the boards, but they're awfully repetitive and I think mundane. As, as a plane, it even seems as though it was something that was put there before you build a house and you've got this fence that came with the house. It doesn't seem like it belongs to the composition. The um, eyebrow dormer, uh, I think, I, I, I actually suggested at the last meetings, and I, I still think it's a, it's a good move going that way. But here again, in terms of how the details have been developed in every respect, that one is it's out of scale. It's uh, you look at the section, and, and uh, if the room was habited and it had people in it, that the window is not at a height you can look out. And, not whether and whether people get in it or not, it also reveals that on the outside that it's an out of scale uh, element. Uh, um, namely, the, the window, the dormer is um, is too low, and its placement is uh, you know, evidently and clearly guided by where the windows are and having a symmetrical or centered relationship to the windows, which gives it an unfortunate position up on the roof, uh, compositionally. 
So, and other little things such as the columns that occur at the corner of the garage and the entry. Um, I think it's a nice idea that there are columns, but they, I, they're, they're again, I think, uh, out of scale. There's, they're too, uh, sl too, too uh, small to, uh, to be convincing. So all of the details come along as, uh, and, and the whole thing is, of course, more than just details, except everything kind of comes together to make it for me, a very uncomfortable outcome. Um, so it's it's a difficult uh, consideration here. Um, it, all of the concerns that have been expressed before and again tonight to continue to uh, prevail <laughs> in abundance. So I, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Thanks, Fred. Um, well, I appreciate the petitioner has been uh, you know making changes every time we bring up something. I, I think they are. <laughs> attempting to address it. I, I really like what you've done actually on the south side with the window placement I think is a much bigger improvement. Um, I think you've, you've given a nod towards things we've tried to address with a fence and uh, some landscaping, et cetera. So I don't think there's a lack of effort here on uh, the petitioner's part at all. Um, but I do kind of fall on uh, the side of uh, some of my board members who just, the overall mass in this house, when I look at Lewis Avenue and I go down Lewis Avenue, this would be by far the largest house massing wise and i'm not talking square footage because it's a very uh it's it's a skinny house so it's the square footage is, is below bulk and that's fine but the overall mass in that house when you look uh on the streetscape of of everything else on lewis this is by far going to be the biggest the longest the widest it's it's just it's out of character and that's that's the biggest part i struggle with on this petition um I do think uh, reducing the garage size uh, by eliminating the bonus room, maybe going to a two car uh, would, would help. I don't know if it would help enough, but um, without some nod to that, I, I personally can't uh, get behind this petition as is. Um, and I think if I uh, was reading the tea leaves correctly on my board members, I think we have one, one uh, board member that would probably be able to support this at this point. I don't think we have a quorum here of uh, approving this uh, this evening. And so based upon that, and, and please step in if, if I'm wrong here, gentlemen, the question is what are the next steps? Um, Kathy, I know your recommendation was to eliminate the bonus room to uh, help the massing. That seemed to be the uh, most direct way to respond to the concern about the massing on the west side. Um, a, a thought? Given your comments, uh, I think you've all acknowledged that the petitioners have, have made some changes. If the board is inclined, you could support, you could uh, um, put together a subcommittee of, of two members that could meet with the petitioners and staff and uh, try to expedite resolution of some of these issues. Um, and then the matter could come back to the board. So that would be one option if, if you're not comfortable moving forward at this point and if there still is interest in trying to find the right balance. And I think that might be a good suggestion. Um, the, the one question, the reason why I asked the petitioner was if, if the bonus room really is a must have and we have board members who say it must go, I don't want to waste petitioner's time nor board members time if that's really the case. So I'll do a straw poll here. If that bonus room is still there, is there any way you approve this? Uh, I'd like to know, Bruce, what's your thought on, uh, on the bonus room, yay or nay? I'd, I side with it being workable. Okay. Ross? No. Ted? No. No. Michael? <clears throat> no. no. Bonus I, agree, room? I agree with the staff report that it should not be. And, and I agree as well. So um, with that the backdrop, uh, I, think would, uh, I think we'd be willing to go subcommittee, but if it comes back with a bonus room, uh, there's – the majority of these people are not going to support this petition uh, on this board with a bonus room. So again, with a nod towards not wasting the petitioner's time nor the board time, I think we have to put that in context here. And we certainly can move to subcommittee, but I'm not going to ask people to come and meet and take valuable time up if that's going to be the first thing that goes and they're unwilling to go. So with that as a backdrop, um, and I know one of your uh, principals is not here tonight. I, I think you want to think about that. Um, it's if already we been thought about. It's already been discussed. So okay, we can hear your vote. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, it sounds like it's not willing to go that way. So I guess the uh, 
Like and the, then the next step, Kathy, would that uh, sounds like uh, not approving this petition, and um, um, that's certainly your choice. You, you could continue it for for further action, or you could take a vote to deny it. Um, so it wouldn't we, preclude the petitioners from coming back with um, with a modified plan. If we were to continue it, then that would just leave it back in their court. They could come back or not. Okay, given. The backdrop of our conversation, obviously, they'd have that benefit. Okay, well, with that, uh, it sounds like that's where the board wants to go. So, uh, uh, a continue of the petition. Uh, do we have uh, that motion from someone? I move to continue this petition relative to the the staff recommendations and the board's opinion. Okay, I second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion is continued. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is consideration of request for approval of an addition to a commercial building located at 915 South Waukegan Road, commonly known as Lovell's Restaurant. The building is proposed for adaptive reuse as a medical office building. Approval of a revised landscape plan is also requested. The owner is a Lovell Family Limited Partnership, James A. Lovell Trustee. Contract purchaser is North Shore University Health System, Gerald Gallagher, COO. The representative is Mr. Peter Whitmer, architect. <coughs> Welcome, Mr. Whitmer. And uh, before we begin, does anybody have any uh, conflicts or interest or ex parte contacts? No? Okay, seeing none. Okay, um, let me see if I can get this thing started. It worked earlier. There we go, perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm Peter Whitmer uh, from Whitmer Associates. I have um, um, a group of people here um, from the uh, owner's rep, the uh, landscape architect, and our um, Mike Stein, who is our, uh, an architect that we're working together with this project from uh, Interwork Architects. Uh, the building, uh, uh, existing building, we actually, the original thought um, from the Petitioner was to tear down the building and start over. It would have been much easier to build a, a, a medical building starting from over. But uh, I think one of the reasons that we were hired uh, was that uh, to work with the existing building with that idea. And I think uh, from that start, um, it made a lot of sense. And you know, how do we incorporate this building? Because this is really an icon, I think, in the west side. It was a, a monumental building to start with, and I think. Uh, Captain Lovell's here tonight in his, uh, really his dream to build this building. And I think it would be a shame to lose this piece of history um, because it is part of Lake Forest and, and part of the, the west side. Uh, we tried to work within the existing footprint and we found that if we were to add an addition to the south, we could increase the efficiency of the floor plan pretty drastically. So with a 10% uh, addition, we could increase the uh, patient rooms about 83%, which is, is it's amazing to me that with a, such a small addition we could do that. Uh, it really was only uh, one area to look at. You know, we couldn't add anything on the uh, west side. Uh, the north side, uh, we were really right up against the building, and we really didn't want to alter the parking or take any par parking and, and increase the footprint there. So really our only option was to, to take and look at this south side as an addition. So uh, what we have here is uh, a, about a 17 foot wide, about a thousand foot um, footprint on addition to the south um, that takes the area of what is currently a trash enclosure. There's a stone wall on the west, there's a relatively uh, high wood fence. Uh, there's some uh, walk-in coolers in there and some trash and then some doors uh, into that space from the east. Here's just a floor plan uh, just to show you how that works. Um, this is the addition piece to the south. That's the, the exterior building right now. We're retaining all the um, entrance piece, how you come into the space. And then the other thing was to work with the existing windows and so that the, the building looked like it was occupied and we're able to do that with, with windows that were there and, and, and get our uh, exam rooms around, which I think was an important um, element of the design. Second floor really mirrors the first. Uh, the third floor, 
really becomes more of a mechanical space, so that won't be occupied. And then the lower level um, is really employee space. It's it's very challenging to do anything with that one, just getting patients to get down to a lower level. And then it's a very tight floor to ceiling uh, space down there. I think probably everybody's been down there and can reach up. And, and uh, so uh, that really is just an employee area. Our you know our goal to, for the project is really to add on to to it and when we're done and not really know where we add it on. Uh, so, you know, the, this is the west elevation. So it's, you know, a, a big mass with little little um, hip pieces. Massing comes out with a little tower here. And our idea to the south was to have uh, a hip roof come off of that. We do have a mechanical unit that needs to be um, placed in this. So how can we hide that in this addition? Uh, and we incorporated that into our design. The materials really just mirror what is there. So, you know, wood shake roof, uh, the soffit details and all the brackets will be the same. The brick detailing around the windows is the same as the existing and the stucco. Uh, actually, the stone wall to the west will be, we're going to reuse that existing wall um, so that that will be an exact match. And then we'll come around to the south with new. Uh, this is the east elevation, so the entrance stays the same. Uh, 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 here's our addition. Uh, so we have the pitch roof on the top, stucco on the top, and then stone below. There's a little service entrance in, in that corner. The um, north elevation is modified slightly. There was an existing patio that was added to the original design, and we really don't have a need for that. And um, so what we're doing is removing that back to the original design, putting landscape in, and then infilling the doors. There's two doors there currently. Uh, with a window to match the existing windows and the mutton patterns there. And then this is the south elevation. Uh, and in that elevation, we have the two gables. Uh, we have this terrace um, look with this balcony, and we're hiding the mechanical unit. I'll go in a little bit more detail there. Um, with that, we have uh, awnings, blue awnings that match the, the uh, other elevations, and then uh, windows that match uh, that really at both levels with blue shutters and and all the detailing will match the the roof plan this is the roof plan of our existing so we have these um, two hip roof pieces coming out the center this is our mechanical unit on our new addition and then the railing that comes around and what we did um, was really sink that down in so in section uh, that that unit can sit down in and this is very similar to what they do on the roof uh, currently they have the same sort of situation so um, we feel like this is a, a great way to add character and hide, you know, basically our, our big mechanical unit. There is some constructability issues of how do you get a new unit of size and uh, to a building so we can work with that by craning this thing on top uh, too. Uh, the landscape plan, uh, basically the idea here is, is that, you know, the landscape has is, is been maintained, but it's now, I don't know, probably 15 years old. Um, so. One of the things that's happened is they, they had ash trees on the perimeter of the parking lot and they're starting some deterioration and they're just going to continue to deteriorate. So uh, we feel like this is a great time to replant those with uh, multicultural um, deciduous trees so that we don't have the same sort of ash issue again. So that goes around the parking lot. Uh, we're also providing some new deciduous trees on the north elevation um, and one at the corner where there's an ash tree that will get removed. And then on the south elevation, again, we have some more deciduous trees. And then we have ground plantings, really uh, base plantings around um, the uh, base of the building. The site, uh, this just shows the elevations with a landscape uh, in front of it to, to help you an idea. Uh, these are the deciduous trees uh, along the, the uh, south. And one of the things that we're doing on the west is there's two maple trees there currently. Um, which are relatively close uh, to the building. And one of the advantages of keeping the uh, stone retaining wall that's there now in the footing is that we can feel like we can keep these and just really trim off the back branches because they do a really good job of um, sort of integrating this addition in by hiding it behind these two pretty large uh, maple trees that are pretty dense. Uh, and we think that that's an important element to this. Uh, site lighting. Uh, we, we're planning on using the existing site lighting, uh, except 
it's, uh, I think it's sodium vapor, so it's a yellow light. And uh, there's really a strange contrast between the city's lights, which are, or I think, mercury vapor, which is a white light, and, and these yellow lights. So the city lights are out here on the street, and then ours are interior. So we're planning to relamp those with the LED, so it's a whiter light and more efficient and, and all that. The, we are planning on adding two light fixtures, um, one in the center island and one next to the entrance. When we did the photometrics, it was pretty dark, and it's pretty important to have a light level um, so that people can get from the car safely into the, the entrance of the building. I think the last piece is a trash enclosure. And let me just go back to show you where that is. Let's click it this way. Okay. I don't, do you, I don't believe you have a trash. Do you have a trash enclosure? Oh, you do. Yep. Have this part of your package. Yep. Thanks. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, let me try. To, I have to restart this thing. It must have got too much. Uh, but basically, the trash enclosure is. Um, get this restarted. Uh, we had to relocate it because um, the, there we go. Okay. Um, <coughs> it was inside and that's where our building addition is. We think the best spot for the trash enclosure is um, next uh, to the parking lot area so that when you drive in, you see the short end of it and you don't see the face of it. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is really the prominent entrance to the building. Uh, this way um, and so and it's kind of hidden here as you come in this way. So um, That's the location. We think it makes sense. We've made it out of uh, I'll just go through and see if we can get this um, out of brick and uh, There it is uh, brick infill with uh, stone columns and some uh, wood gates and really it's just the reason we wanted to do that is so it stays together. Uh, they get beat up pretty good uh, over time, and so we think that makes some sense. So I think that's um, pretty much our presentation. I can turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, staff report, please. Thank you, Chairman King. Um, I actually had the privilege of working with Captain Lovell um, as on this project, one of, one of my first projects. Uh, this uh, Mr. Lovell's restaurant, Captain Lovell's restaurant, did come before the Building Review Board um, and was approved, uh, landscaping, lighting, uh, signage, all of that. Um, so uh, the idea that uh, the, the new owner is coming forward and reusing the building, I, I think this has become a, a landmark in the community. It's, it's not a historic building, but it has become a very important building. and. Um, so their, their approach of wanting to uh, do a small addition on the south side, uh, the south side of this building currently is the service area as described by Mr. Whitmer. Um, the addition is done in keeping with the building. Um, they did work carefully to uh, look at those mechanicals on the roof. And you do see one condition that um, as the construction plans come forward, we will wanna see some sight line drawings just to be sure that from the street level those mechanicals are uh, are concealed um, and obviously looking up is, is certainly going to help to conceal them as well. Um, this is coming before you uh, because it is a commercial project. Uh, commercial buildings do require building review board uh, even if they're not, uh, if, even if they are not difficult projects. Um, you are being asked to uh, grant approval of the design of the addition uh, the landscaping as reviewed by Mr. Whitmer is really updating. This is a situation where the site was well landscaped. We are losing ash trees. Uh, we have heard from uh, some residents who live in the, the development behind Sunset that they're very pleased to see that that streetscape will be enhanced because they are losing a lot of ash trees in that area. So I think the enhancement of the perimeter landscaping will be important. Uh, the lighting is generally staying the same. Uh, certainly the, the changing of the color is a benefit. Uh, the addition of lighting uh, is appropriate. Um, I believe that uh, you will be coming back with a signage package, um, that you're still working on that, so that is something that the board will see. 
Um, you do have a few recommended conditions, but you do have findings in support of this project, uh, and we do recommend approval. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, time for questions uh, from the board to the petitioner staff. Uh, Fred, why don't we start uh, down here on this time, if you don't mind? Um, don't have any questions. Okay. All right. Michael? Uh, I had a question on the east facade elevation. It, it, any thought of putting windows in there or... You know, and, and it, when you look at it, it, that's the one part that doesn't seem to match the rest of the building. Let me just pull that up. Um, you know, one of the things is, is that we have on the landscape plan, we do have an entrance in there. You know, I think um, the... Um, There we go. Um, looking at the floor plan, it is a little bit challenging in terms of um, having an exam room with two windows in it. Uh, and I think that was probably the, the thought of that. Uh, one of the things that I think that might make some sense there is to add a tree in front of it. You know, I, I thought we had a, a tree in the corner there. And when I looked at the landscape plan, we don't. Um, and that might, if we look <coughs> here, if you um, if we were to put a tree r right around the corner here, it would help the, that massing. Or we could look at doing a, a window too. You know, I'm not sure in terms of the functionality, in terms of the window. I, I think either one of those would probably work. Um, and maybe a window would be more appropriate in terms of the scale, the whole elevation. I, I think you're right. What is that uh, in the lower level? There's an entry uh, in the, in the lower level. On the east side on the first floor. That. Yeah, that's that's the entry. And then there's also an exam. Um, there's an exam room in the corner and then an entrance. You can see how that works in the plan there. I, I think it's actually the window in the in the upper level in the second floor is much more important than the one on the first because you know I think you have the landscape there and I think one of the thing concerns is having more patients rooms with with windows down low we have a lot of them already but I think the one on the second level you see from the parking lot back um, will be a because yeah, I noticed on the west elevation you you did do that mm -hmm. and the west elevation has a stone wall all across the first floor level. No further questions. Okay, Ted. Good evening, Peter. Uh, on your site plan, it appears that the location um, of the addition we're talking about and, and the existing trash area is over the setback line, but no one's mentioned that. So am I it, misreading this? It, I, I, actually, it has zero line setbacks in this zone. All right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Um, I. Also had a, a question with regard to the windows in those corner units on the southeast and southwest corners, and maybe an alternative that allows you to keep one window is just to move the windows in each of those corner suites to the alternative side. That you're keeping one window, and just if you have any thoughts on that, I, you know, I, I think I'd add the window and keep the windows on the south side because it, right under the gables of the the hips, and I think it it would be peculiar to have those as blank. Um, so I think it would look better to add the windows on the, on, on the uh, east and west, okay. or east side, yeah. Had there been any thought to moving the addition to the east side of the building at all? That, that would be, it does have a corner yard setback. Uh, on, that's the interior side, which is zero, but the corner yard is, is, is set back. It has a side yard which is almost at the building, so that's really an impossibility. And I, and I think, too, even if it was, 
I think that would be a mistake. I think it would jam that corner. You know, we want to kind of keep that open. And I think that the upper terrace that's up there and, you know, there's a lot of interesting things that are on that that we would, you know, really on the south side now, it's, it's relatively blank. It's the trash. So okay. it makes sense to. to My only side. other question, there was a mention that, uh, and you, you brought it up, that you're getting rid of the patio on the north side and that there's a change to <clears throat> the French doors that are there. But I didn't see that necessarily reflected in your elevation. Can you walk me through what Fair. those doors are going to look like? Uh, basically, they're going to be just infilled with panes of glass that have muttons. So okay. they, so it's they the just same fit. Look. It's, it's, it's the same look. look. It's basically taking a door out, which has a, a wider jam, and, and inserting a, a glass panel with a regular window jam. Perfect. That's all I have. Thank you, Peter. Ross? Hey, Peter. Are you cooperating with Inner Work Architects? Yes. Ms. Bridget? The, um, the South, the addition, you mentioned that there's zero, zero setback on that lot, property line. Does that impact the uh, drainage and utility easement at all? We've worked that out with the bank and we have a drainage easement uh, agreement and we're relocating the storm yeah. or the uh, sanitary to go around that and Reroute work that. through that. Yes. I agree with you regarding the um, adding a window to the second floor of the um, the east elevation. I think that is more important um, with an appropriate placement of landscaping below. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend, um, you know, consideration of that. That's all I have. Okay. Bruce, any questions? Um, actually, questions more for my edification. Um, and Kathy, maybe you can help me with this. Uh, code allows this building, which is for medical use, to go in there. It was a restaurant, so in terms of zoning, I'm sure there's no issue there. But the fact that it's a medical facility, are there any that's interested? Emergency vehicle access, hazardous ways, fire safety. I just know that there, there are different standards for medical buildings than there are for. Actually, this project is going before the plan commission n next week, next Wednesday. Um, it, medical offices are a special use in right. the B1 zoning district, so they will consider the use and the parking and the lighting and, and all of those use aspects. Um, Certainly, life safety building codes will need to be met. However, this building, as we talked about it, was just constructed in the late 90s. So um, as far as uh, the need for uh, um, access by emergency vehicles or hazardous waste, I can't speak to that. Um, no, I, I don't believe it. I just didn't know really it requires special access doors because sometimes there, are, there can be some different standards, standards that you yeah, have yeah. for that. So if they would have an impact on the building itself. That's why I brought it up, so. You know, there's only two things I forgot to add. Um, one is on the landscape plan here, um, we have a... Um, uh, Just handicap access. Um, along the Gloucester uh, Road access, uh, we have a hedgerow that's along the base that we're adding to so that we can basically try to cut off some views into that parking lot as you drive down Gloucester too. So that, I think that's an addition. And then I didn't know if I threw up these renderings, which I think are helpful. Um, this is as if you're walking down the sidewalk um, of the addition. And then this is if you're across the street looking at it, uh, which again, I think, you know, illustrates what we're trying to do here. Good. Thank Answered you. my questions. And Great. Set. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Whitmer, the, uh, the window, one of the uh, objections you had for having a window possibly on that um, south uh, east facade was that you wouldn't have two, win you didn't want two windows in the exam rooms, but it looks like the northwest and northeast corners actually do have two yeah, windows. Yeah, so there's a lot of windows. Is that, is that just a, a line you're throwing out? Or, uh, <laughs> well, that? actually, that was a big discussion in the start of this was, you know, how are we going to handle these windows in, in the exam rooms? And obviously, you know, it's... And, and so I think uh, uh, that's what I was thinking when we were, uh, I, I think we can handle it like the other one, so. Okay. 
Um, any other questions, guys? Okay, seeing none. Uh, now's a chance for anyone from the uh, public to come up. Uh, any testify? Anyone wish to come forward? Okay, seeing none. Um, I guess no new, uh, no need for staff response because there was no testimony and uh, no rebuttal from petition. So, any final questions from the board uh, to the petitioner or staff? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. Well, let's go to discussion then, uh, gentlemen. And uh, Fred, do you want to uh, lead off in your thoughts on this uh, proposal? Yes, I do. Um, I think it's very sensitively developed, very nicely put together. Um, appreciate the uh, blending of the new addition with the existing building, a very seamless manner, very much in character with it. Um, I congratulate the architect and the client for what they've done. Great. Okay. Michael? I think if you, with the addition of the window on the east facade, I think it'll make that uh, blend in a little bit more with the existing building. That's my only thought, and you could have that added in. Okay. Great. Ted? Well, I'm disheartened we're losing the restaurant. I just want to put that on the record. Uh, it's uh, being a lifelong resident of Lake Forest. Uh, your restaurant's become a, a favorite place for my family to dine, and it's, as Kathy noted, a landmark. Uh, it's, uh, you did a beautiful job building the building, and uh, really pleased that the decision by the buyer is to uh, work uh, with this beautiful building and, and uh, make sure that although it's not on any historic preservation rosters now, I'm confident uh, in the future it certainly will be. Uh, I fully support the petition. Thank you. I concur with, with my fellow board members. Uh, I think it's a terrific adaptive reuse of this structure, and I, I uh, applaud that. Uh, agree with the window. As we mentioned previously, the addition of that and paying special attention to the landscaping and appropriate plant material and species and quantity. Okay. Bruce? I think your upfront decision to maintain the integrity of the structure that was there is making it a lot easier for us. So I support it. I think you've done a nice job. I agree. Uh, it's really nice to see a building like this that uh, is going to be in the community for a lot longer. Uh, would have been much easier to scrape this and start from scratch. So we appreciate uh, purchaser, architects, and seller getting together and, and presenting something really nice and fitting with the community and uh, same materials, et cetera. So it's great. I would say that I'm strongly in favor of the uh, window on the east side. And I personally, I think I'd like to make that one of the contingencies of our approval, if that's okay with uh, agree. the rest of the board at uh, Eastern Marine. So. All right, with that being said, do we have a motion on this? I'll move to, to approve the motion relative to staff comments and our board comments inclusive of the window. Okay. Second? Second. 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 Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Our um, next item on the agenda is the opportunity for the public to address the board on any non-agenda items. Okay, seeing none. Uh, anything else uh, from staff, Kathy? Nothing. Stay okay. warm. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, with that, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We adjourn. Thank you.